Black Lives Matter Denmark is a chapter of Black Lives Matter, which was started in the USA, in the, in the United States of America. Um, I should say in Black Lives Matter USA, as most people know it, and as we know it as well, is it was a protest because of law enforcement shooting and killing black men um, and women for that matter. Uh, but when you actually look into it, they do a lot more than that. There's lots more facets to it um, and mostly work with like incarceration, imprisonment and, um, uh, and uh, healing groups, uh, criminology, which is what we also do in Denmark and immigration, immigration, immigration. Yeah. Yeah. It was started by three black women in America and one of them works specifically with immigration and her own family was were immigrants and uh, um, asylum seekers refugees this is what we yeah and it was the imprisonment of refugees of asylum seek rejected asylum seekers for very long periods of time uh, and other immigrants it was like the comfort zone was very low into prison a long time um, and I was visiting the prisoners as a humanitarian and uh, as in a humanitarian group, which doesn't do press, we just they just do humanitarian work, and um, I use black I use Black Lives Matter as a channel to protest um, this work, and um, um, we found that there's so much more, so much more to do. We have different groups which which work with. Um, like just black women healing group who who discuss racism, mm -hmm. uh, their experiences and can help each other. And, and one of the founders of Black Lives Matter works specifically with that. So we have a group like this. So this is uh, what uh, Black Lives Matter, it was a necessity. Lots of work to do. <laughs> well, um, of course, our initial connection and inspiration was from the States. But as soon as I decided the, uh, there were activists in America who asked me to start the Black Lives Matter movement and after some thought I, I did it and then and then I started to look close to try to find what's happening what's happening in London what's happening in um, yeah in Germany and uh, f following from um, yeah through the through the internet I, I found a Black Lives Matter uh, Denmark in October and in January, February, we got, we really mobilized to enlarge from the, the little first uh, initial group. Um, so we have a lot to do, but like when I travel here, the first thing I did was try to find Black Lives Matter Madrid. Yeah. And, uh, and try to, con cause it, it exists. <laughs> yes. It, it, uh, they, they've done support protests for what's happening in the United States and then not much more, but, um, we connect a lot more for example, with we I discovered in this uh, in in my research that um, there's the Spanish for 10 years there's been protests outside immigration prisons here where we are just starting the protests now and uh, right now there are hunger strikes in immigration prisons in Denmark um, happening in a place where we were over in protest last year. So last week, and again, we're there to, to support the, hung, uh, the, the uprising of the people, of the inmates. Um, so this, uh, across Europe, yeah, we, we follow along. It, it, we're, we're new, we're busy. In Denmark, there's just so much to do. Um, but we have, the beauty of this festival is we've just agreed with, I've just met uh, activists from, from uh, London black activist so I'm going there for one month in, in January yeah so we can start we're going to kick start the Black Lives Matter London yeah we can see this is a necessity for it they also have a Black Lives Matter UK but we need to have a Black Lives Matter London yeah so so it's uh, great to be here and to um, there's a connection I should have brought her with me <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I think I'll take her to my interviews <laughs> from now on. So, uh, yeah, a lot of connection. There is this Afrophobia, um, organ which is like politicians and the EU. It's, it's, more, it's not really civil society as much as we are. It's like the finance by the EU. 
that is going uh, that I have been following as well, like with an interest from a from outside. Um, so there's something with Afrophobia, but we, but we wish to use them to make a connection, to make an, so that we can strengthen each other throughout Europe. Yeah. So it's very important for me to come here to be inspired and be inspired. Mm. In, in uh, Denmark, there are four prisons, um, two high security prisons, uh, Bristol Salilla and Ellebeck. Uh, and especially Bristol Salilla, they just, they were the worst uh, high, long, long sentence criminals. Um, rapists, murderers, and so on. They were, they were moved out of the prison and then three weeks later in the same prison with the same guards, they moved in non-criminal asylum seekers. Uh, there were language issues. Uh, the people, uh, uh, many of them are war traumatized uh, and which the guards had no idea how to deal with. Um, and even though there are black and brown people in prison, they are often Danes. They're grown up in Denmark. Um, but these people were just, they had just arrived in Denmark, some of them. Um, and we were given the idea, what I thought I would, I would find in this prison was something completely different to when I got there. We, we were, the public were told, two, three weeks, deportation, we know we've done your case, then we, you arrange the flight, people leave. You got in there, there were pe people were from warring countries, a lot, a lot of them were from warring countries, and they had been, um, and uh, like there was a man from Afghanistan who had been in prison for 11 months. And they had tried to deport him and he'd, he'd made, uh, he protested it, uh, he uh, struggled. Uh, but there were also others who desperately wanted to, they caught Moroccan who thought, well, let me try to go to Denmark and see if I can get a permit there. They catch him at the border, they jail him. And then his family is fighting in Morocco. I was calling the embassy, he wants to go home. So it's not this whole idea of, and, and uh, this is one exact, and also other people who were just traveling through, through Denmark. Um, they've been in Germany for 10 years, they've been rejected, but Germany couldn't quite get rid of them. So they've got a German document. And he was, when the borders have been opened, he's used to visiting a sister who was settled in Sweden, had children in Sweden, married in Sweden. They stop him in, Germ in Germany. They jail him for months. And he just, sorry, at the Danish border, at the border. And they put him in the prison for months because they want him to write home and tell other people don't come here. Or, or there was also this whole project was a prestige project and they wanted to fill up and see how, what a huge problem this is, which it isn't about people trying to stay in Denmark. So they tried to make it look as if there were more people, it was necessary to keep this prison open. Um, and so they were like, it, at a certain point, there were 50 guards for 26 prisoners, even down to 18 prisoners at a point. So it was more, it was more expensive per night um, to live in that prison than it was in the most expensive hotel in Denmark where you, where you host presidents. So it's very political, it's very symbol, symbol politics rather than uh, and just making people's lives miserable and uh, this prison they really wanted to fill it so they would like there's a, a nigerian businessman eating in a restaurant in the middle of his meal they go can we see your papers and he had just had his papers stolen and he he uh, wired he was like his headphone his iphone in one hand and a bag in the other um, he puts down his bag to pay for a, a coffee to go in 7-Eleven and his bag was gone. So he wired his secretary who sent him money on Western Union, went to the nearest, got some and sat down and to have a meal to figure out, called family, what can I do? Can, help me, I've lost my papers. They, they pick him up like this and they, and he was in there for like nearly three months. He had to seek asylum to get out. And so it's that ridiculous, and a Palestinian, one final example, a Palestinian from Sweden, he's been in Sweden five years, but they won't give him full status. They just, they give him an apartment, he can work, and he's got some form of temporary residence. He, he falls asleep on the train. He, he get, he, there are lots of tracks in Malmo. He's, he gets on a 
a train and realizes, oh, I'm on the train to Copenhagen and not instead of into Sweden. He goes straight to the police when he gets there and says, sorry, you know, I took the wrong train. I need to go home. They jailed him for two, three months. They would eat. So, like, so it's, we, there's this comfort zone and the lack of reaction when you walk into a prison where all the guards are white and every single person in that prison is black or brown. And I'm like, don't the Russians and the Ukrainians, don't they take the wrong train? Where are they? How come, how come there's no uh, prisoner in there from white Russia? How come they're all black and brown in that prison? Any alarm clocks for anybody here 60 years after Germany's little, or oh, Nazi Germany's, well, doesn't that make you feel uncomfortable? It doesn't make, it make you ask, want to ask questions. And the, what it was, German, Danish prisoners who have, who are rapists and murderers, they have a choir, they have instruments, they, they can cook their own food, they have a re-socializing program, they have psychologists, they have a fitness room. They removed everything from that prison because the immigration prisons are not allowed that. So, and uh, we, they could only have one call a week. And actually in the beginning, they were isolated 23 hours a day until first it was a prison doctor who complained and we made more demonstrations and we, yeah, to complain about the, so there were the, those are the two high security, which is, I've been working with mostly high security uh, concentrated because there are two other prisons where you can leave every day, but you have to come back and check in at 19 hours. And one of them, which is the biggest one, they've placed it like you have to cycle for 40 minutes, 45 minutes before you get to the nearest little town or just a little shop. It, it's like in the middle of, uh, yeah, there's some farms around with, and the farmers there have never seen black and brown people before. And they're like, I'll shoot them. And they're getting guns. If they come on my, they're like really spooked out. Um, and it's just far away from family and for, and right now they are hunger striking because these people are rejected asylum seekers, but they are pro prosecuted, prosecuted in Iraq and in Somalia. They're from these countries where there are wars. It, it, again, how come there's nobody in this, let's say, what, uh, Mali, uh, let's say Zimbabwe. Uh, Zimbabwe, there's even a reason there. Let's say Namibia. How come there's no, there aren't four men from Namibia in there staying year after year, I've got nowhere to, I, ca I can't leave. How come they're from Iraq? How come, where there are bombs all the time? How come they're from Afghanistan, where there are war? How come, how come they're from Somalia? How come the prisons are, and then the whole idea was to make it so uncomfortable they choose to go home. But they haven't chosen to go home because they can't go home. It, maybe it's better, and it is definitely better in that prison than to be dead. Or you have nothing to go back to. You came as a minor when you were 15, and then they keep you in there, now you're 31. Some people have been in the system for 11 years. So, and, and it's not going anywhere. So they're like, uh, they've been hunger striking for 10 days, uh, 12, oh, it was 10 days a few days ago, I think 14 days now. And they're being, now they're really sick. So last weekend we organized a bus trip from different areas of, Co of Denmark and we went to, uh, there to support, um, to support them. Uh, and this is open prison. They can go out, the idea is they can go out. They just need to, every few weeks, they can get two days if they have family somewhere, but they get no pocket money uh, and they get no, um, and they have to sign in with their fingerprint every day, which is what is a Danish open prison. It, if you've been doing economic criminality or something, then you get, it actually you get, you can even get a whole week, long weekend off or you can get, um, like a, I don't, I don't know what it was it called in English, full length. It's, it's uh, when you have a tracker on your leg so you can serve your time at home. Uh, so you would know where these people are and, and so on. But the, uh, no, they put them in inside. And all of these four places are old prisons that they have converted into, into detention centers. And they then change their name and call it a detention center when it isn't. And I refuse to use that word. It is a prison. 
call it what it is. It is a prison. Yeah. Well, um, I go to them. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't. Um, institution itself. It, uh, Black Lives Matter is not really. It's not something that we don't get, seek funding. It is a mo grassroots movement of the people, by the people, for the people. So it's institutions, no. Um, the women's organization, because I'm a woman, have reached out and said, what can we do to help you? And I said, oh, I need places for a meeting. So um, I, I can go, we, I can book a meeting room and when I need it, that kind of thing. But that is as far as, I, the furthest I can say to institute. Otherwise, if, in these arrangements where the public is invited to debate evening debate panel i am there and i question why why are you doing it? Uh, i question top politicians as if i can be there and i can question them so uh i've um for example the last year just two days after our first protest in october the police went into a park and took black all the black immigrant homeless and arrested them left the white ones and put them in jail like if you get a speeding ticket you don't put people in jail there are things you can give a fine this is a fine thing perhaps if you really look at it not even and they had they got compensation we fought for it we as soon as they were arrested we went in and we we uh, protested outside but I think what really shaped it was when there was a group of politicians uh, who were in debate panel. I went there and we went and we in the first row and said, this is Black Lives Matter Denmark. And the eyes became like teacups. Why here? And I think it's the same here in Spain and all over Europe. We didn't shoot. We didn't, don't really shoot black. Well, they do sometimes you do. And people have died in prison and so on, but not the way Americans do. So um, it was a shock. And I think, and within seven days, they got compensation. And I believe those politicians were trying to give a reason like we don't need Black Lives Matter in Europe. Give them the compensation, shut down, you know, but there's plenty of things to do in Europe. As long as you have your prisons, as long as you have um, institu institutionalized racism, as long as the court cases and incarceration, um, we, we will be here. We'll be here for a long time and we'll be yelling and we'll be shouting and we will unite across Europe and we will be growing ever stronger. Yeah.